Well, hello everyone. I am Larry Mac Reynolds, and this is another edition of the Mac Reynolds Rundown. We're coming off of a short track race at Richmond this past Saturday night, and now there's only one race to go in this first round of the playoffs. Only three drivers are locked in to move on: Martin Truex Jr., Denny Hamlin, and now Kyle Larson. When I look back there around the cut line, it is wide open with 500 laps of racing to come this weekend at Bristol. Now we still have a lot of racing to go, but I always get excited when the new schedule comes out and this week the 2022 schedule for the Cup Series was released. Not a lot of moving around. They did shuffle some races around. We've got a couple of new tracks. I'm not going to give you every single race of the schedule, but I'm going to hit the highlights. On February the 6th, we're going to run the Clash out in Los Angeles. I'll give you a little more on that here directly. But for the first time that I can remember, Easter Sunday, we will be Cup racing at the Bristol Dirt Track. The all-star race is going to go back to the month of May, May 22nd, still at Texas Motor Speedway. I was glad to see that. But the one new track, World Technology Raceway, Gateway St. Louis, it's added to the schedule on June the 5th. It's going to replace one of those Pocono doubleheader races. Now, Richmond in the fall moves out of the playoffs to the third race from the end of the regular season. Now, the playoff races, they've been shuffled a little bit, but the cutoff races remain the same. And now, Homestead Miami Speedway will be added to the middle of the third round of the playoffs. I love what they do. They didn't go crazy with it. They just shuffled some things around. We have that new race track that's added up in St. Louis. And the biggest thing, we have very few races on Saturday. I've always said NASCAR Cup racing is a Sunday show. Well, this is our second topic of the week of the Mac Reynolds Rundown. What are my expectations for the L.A. Coliseum race for the Clash next season? Now, two weeks before the Daytona 500, we're still going to have the Clash, but no longer will it be at Daytona. We're going to go all the way out to Los Angeles to the Coliseum. And I think what makes that so cool, this is the 100th birthday of the L.A. Coliseum. And I like the fact we're going out to the West Coast. We've been running the Clash at Daytona since 1979. And I just feel like it somewhat has run its course. A lot of teams, they didn't really even embrace being a part of it. But I think to go out there to one of the more famous venues in the country, and it's a kind of a flat track. We're going to get some short track racing. We've never come close to running the Clash at a short track. So I think it's going to be a very big event and a very special event to kick the 2022 Cup Series season off. So with the spring Bristol race now on the dirt for the second consecutive year next year in 2022, does the Bristol night race feel more special? Well, I've always felt like the Bristol night race in August was a little more special than the spring race that we run in the day. I like the fact that we're back on dirt with the cup cars. Remember, last year was the first time in over 50 years, and I think Bristol is the perfect place. But you know... Running under the lights at Bristol, there's just something special about that feeling. And I think as a driver, as a team, when you win at Bristol, you know you've done a night's work. I think whether you're a driver or a team or whatever part of a race team, you want to win any track we go to. But I think everybody wants to say, we want to race on the Bristol concrete surface. Well, as you know by now, this is my favorite part of the Mac Reynolds Rundown, answering a fan's question. And this week's question comes from Tim Bumpus from Memphis, Tennessee. Larry, in recent years, Richmond hasn't produced the type of racing we'd expect for a short track. What do you believe might be causing the issues behind this? Well, honestly, Tim, you know, to me, good short track racing does not mean that you have to have wrecking. And I saw some pretty good racing on Saturday night at Richmond. But I do think one reason we're not seeing as many cars get together, when you put 37, 38 cars on a three-quarter mile track and the groove has widened out, they don't have to bump each other out of the way. Another element is I think they're not running a full fuel run on tires. A fuel run at Richmond is about 100 to 110 laps but they were basically only going 50 to 55 laps. No tire issues, nobody really sliding around as much as you would if you ran the full run on tires. But I like what I saw from a standpoint of the strategy that crew chiefs were doing, when to make that green flag pit stop, and it was unpredictable, Tim. The beginning of the race looks like no one could touch Denny Hammond. The middle of the race looked like it was Chase Elliott's race to lose, and then at the end, Martin Trex Jr. 
Jr. took control and got his fourth win of 2021. So I honestly like that racing. It was kind of the same race that we had there in the spring with only five cautions. So again, love your questions. Submit them to at NASCAR on Fox on Twitter. Use hashtag MacReynolds Rundown. I hope you enjoyed this edition. Next week, guess what? We're going to know who the 12 drivers are to move on to the round of two. Have a great week, everybody. For more great NASCAR on Fox content, subscribe to our channel. It's somewhere right around here.